ladies and gentlemen, as the allotted time has come, let us begin the uh, com international conference today. Uh, my name is uh, Mika Obayashi, uh, of, uh, director of the Japan Renewable Energy Foundation. And today, we will be discussing about how Germany has led the world in the renewable energy expansion. And we do have some guests from overseas and uh, some authorities from Japan, too, who have been studying uh, about the situation in Germany as well as the renewables in Japan. First, I would like to uh, ask uh, Toma, uh, Thomas uh, Kabaje, Executive Board Chair, Japan Renewable Energy Foundation, for some opening remarks. And uh, after that, uh, Mr. Kimio Yamaka, President, Institute of Energy Strategy, will be talking about the achievements and challenges for renewable energy in Japan and Germany. And after that, uh, Dr. Klaus von Senkbusch, uh, Head of the Department of Energy e Economics, 50 Hertz, will be giving his keynote speech. And then we'll take a 20-minute break. If we do have any questions for the panel discussion following the break, please do jot them down. I'm happy and uh, them over to any staff member who may be around. And uh, after a 10 to minute break, we'll have the panel discussion where Dr. Takahashi from the research fellow, uh, who's a research fellow of Fujitsu, Re Fujitsu Research Institute will be giving a short presentation and we'll have the other speakers joining in. And lastly, uh, uh, Mr. Takejiro Suyoshi, Executive Board Vice Chair of JREF, will be providing us with some closing remarks. There will be simultaneous interpretation today. Channel 1 is Japanese, Channel 2 is English. Also, the symposium um, minutes will be put up on the uh, JREF website. So if you do need the materials uh, for further study, please refer to our homepage later on. So first, I'd like to call upon uh, Mr. Thomas JREF for some opening remarks. Thank you very much, Mika, for the introduction. And to all of you, very welcome to this afternoon. We are going to talk about the experience and development in Germany, but I would also like to focus attention on the fact that the most important achievement of the development in Germany is that Germany has, by investing a lot of money in renewable energy industry development, made renewable energy technologies cost efficient thereby making Japan a rich country. Previously, when fossil fuels and uranium were the main sources of energy in the world, Japan was resource poor. But now, with solar and wind energy, biomass and geothermal energy being competitive good sources of energy, Japan is once again a resource-rich country. The German policy decided by the parliament and government with the support of the people of Germany to spend money to subsidize or support the introduction of renewables and decrease the utilization of nuclear has, as you see in this diagram, resulted in a dramatic increase in the utilization of renewables and a decrease in nuclear that is slightly smaller than the increase in renewables, making it possible also to reduce the dependence on fossil fuels. We give attention to the German development because Germany was a pioneering country. But it is important to know that the same development has taken place globally in the last decade. You can see here how nuclear and renewables globally were approximately as large as sources of electricity 10 years ago, but now uh, renewables contribute more than twice 
as much electricity globally as nuclear does. And this change started before the Fukushima accident. In fact, last year, the increase of renewable electricity production globally was not only larger than the increase of nuclear, but also, for the first time in a long time, larger than the increase in the electricity generation based on fossil fuels. Many people believe that India and China are increasing their coal-based generation very fast and that that is the major problem in the world. But we are now entering a stage where fossil fuel electricity generation is not even increasing as fast as renewables anymore. The, the largest increase in, in renewables for many years was wind. And the wind energy utilization was, again, uh, pioneered by European countries, first Denmark and then Germany, as you see here. But in the last few years, China has been the largest investor in wind power. Over the last five years, China has built more than one wind power plant per hour, day and night, all around the year, and become number one in global wind power production. As a result of the large increase in wind power investments, the industry has learned to become more cost efficient. This report published one year ago describing the average price paid for wind-generated electricity from new wind power parks in the United States claimed that the cost of the wind power plants in 2012 was 4 yen per kilowatt hour, uh, taking into account that there was a tax subsidy for, for the wind power, maybe four, uh, 6 yen per, per kilowatt hour was a more, or 6.2 was a more correct description. But what's even more interesting, one year later, this year, the US Department of Energy published a report about what the average price for wind from plants built last year was. And now, the average price was 4.7 yen per kilowatt hour, even taking into account the subsidy that still existed. And 4.7 cent per kilowatt hour, that is a low figure compared to the feed-in tariffs av uh, available here. In India, they claim that new wind power is now cheaper than coal-fired power stations. In Australia, they also managed to build new wind power plants at 4 yen per kilowatt hour. In Portugal, the power company claims that new onshore wind power costs 30% less than coal, or one-third cheaper than coal. And um, in Denmark, a few weeks ago, the National Energy Agency published a report of the cost of new electricity generation, saying that onshore wind power costs roughly half of what coal or gas-based generation cost in Denmark. Denmark is a smaller country than Germany, but indeed they were pioneers in building wind power. The um, first wind power that uh, they built during the 1980s and 90s were um, pioneering in the world. They built the, the wind power industry that is still dominating in the world. But in Denmark, as well as in other countries, the existing power companies were initially reluctant to accept wind power plants into their grids. And you can see that until the mid-1990s, there was a slight growth in wind power in Denmark, but then limited by arguments presented by the existing power companies, often blaming problems with the grid, but in fact arguing to defend their existing power plants against competition. 
when the electricity markets in Europe were re-regulated in the late 1990s and the grid ownership and control was separated from the ownership of the power plants, wind power could again start expanding in Denmark and it passed one third of the total electricity consumed in, in Denmark last year and the first half this year they generated 41% of total electricity from wind power plants in Denmark. And the target agreed by almost all political parties in the Danish parliament is to have at least 50% by 2020. Here is the diagram from the report of the Danish Energy Agency where you can see their cost for wind power being just a little more than 5 yen per kilowatt hour and all other alternatives being significantly more expensive than onshore wind power. The solar electricity generation, which has expanded almost entirely due to the uh, German efforts a few years ago, is now continuing to grow uh, in a situation where Germany is no longer the largest investor. It is now China and Japan. Also here, costs have come down to the extent that in Europe, in Spain, they now report the first large investments done without any subsidies or support. The same in Italy, where it's possible to build solar installations now without any support. And this is having consequences for the financial sector where banks start saying this is where money should go and financial institutions also downgrading existing power companies because of the expected competition from low cost solar electricity. This is going to be a major challenge for existing power companies globally and it is a good explanation why electric power companies controlling uh, or owning the existing power plants and controlling power grids are trying to create barriers for new entrants. One illustration illustrating how fast the cost of um, solar power has gone down is to see how quickly the Germans have lowered their feed-in tariffs that they offered for uh, new solar installations. And you can see here that the current feed-in tariffs in, in Germany are approximately at half or less of what the Japanese feed-in tariffs are at. So, this afternoon we're going to learn more about how this German transformation of the electricity supply system has been carried out. We will learn about the problems that they do encounter when you pass 20, 30 or 40% uh, variable renewable electricity like wind and solar. But we're also going to learn a lot about arguments that are still used in Japan, but where the experience from Germany and other countries in the world have shown that these arguments are not real and nothing to worry about in setting out to utilize renewable energy, making Japan energy rich and a country with a stronger economy and less dependent on imported uranium and fossil fuels. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. And that was the opening remarks by Mr. Kabaje, Executive Board Chair, JREF. And he talked about the fact that the uh, technology, renewables technology uh, uh, costs have fallen all over the world and that Japan is a resource-rich nation now.